Hello everyone and welcome to Intuitive Art Mediums. Thank you for joining me for this timeless pick a card tarot reading where we're looking at a possible underlying source of a problem and what you can do to bring about some kind of resolution. So this reading is meant to help you to consider other solutions you may not otherwise have considered. So we have four piles. Pile one, we have house spells with the green tiger's eye. Pile two with love spells and the pink rhodonite sphere. Pile three with money spells and the green ulexolite or TV stone. And pile four with moon spells and the opalite sphere. So you may be drawn to more than one pile. That's perfectly all right. That's your intuition letting you know that there's another message for you in that pile. So I'll be starting with pile one and I'll meet you over at your reading. Hello, Pile One. If you chose the green tiger's eye or cat's eye with the house spells, welcome to your reading. So let's check out what your house spell is. Now this reading is meant to help you to consider other solutions to a problem or source of problem that you may not have otherwise considered. Okay, so we have the good housekeeping spell. So before special gatherings or any time when you feel the need to do a deep cleaning on both the physical and spiritual plane, light a white candle and speak the spell. My home is a temple of love and light. I now fill it with peace and beauty for tonight. May all who enter this temple space bring laughter and joy and fill it with grace. So mote it be. Blessings to all. Okay, so that's quite a lovely little start. So let's see what kind of divine tea we have for you. And we have olive leaf tea, which is refreshing. So place 20 dried olive leaf tree leaves in a jug Cover with boiling water and steep for 10 minutes. Okay, so we have a refreshing tea with some good housekeeping here. So it's like you're refreshing your home, refreshing your space. And now we're going to consult with the Dark Goddess Oracle cards to see what is the underlying source of the problem uh, because sometimes the truth is right in front of us and it's hiding in the shadows and we don't see it sometimes it hides in the light too and we have nuba with denial Okay, this definitely seems like something that is hiding in the shadows. There's some denial going on in this situation. So let me just read from the book really quick what Nuba is. So eyes wide shut, ignore not true. Being mean just will not do. Denial only feeds the doubt. Acceptance simply ends the drought. By the power of the dark goddess in me, protection in place, blessed be. So this dark goddess's foresight is to make peace with a family member, express your love more often with a kiss or a hug, 
or tell people that you do love them. Take better care of yourself, meaning take care of your body. Drink plenty of water, you know, because sometimes we just don't drink enough water. And be generous with your time and rein in the excesses in your life. So this, you know, sometimes we deny situations even though they're right there in front of us such as we need to clear our house of the old energy and bring in fresh sacred energy. So let's get into the tarot to see a little bit deeper into this underlying source of the problem. Now keep in mind this is a general reading and only go with the messages that resonate with you. Now this denial could be someone that is in your family and they're just denying um, the negative energy that they're bringing into a situation. This of course can be an aspect of ourselves or a situation that we're in. Let's see, we start off with the Queen of Swords. There is separation and loss here. Now keep in mind, this is the underlying problem. And then we have the Sun. This is something that you are aware of. And then we have the world. That's nice. The sun is illuminating the world. It's like other people can see this too. So if there's some narcissism here, because there is denial with a narcissistic type personality where they just know it's you. They're always putting the blame and shame on other people. Other people see this. You're not going crazy. K8 with the Eight of Swords. Um, this is being bound by your doubts and fears. And look, we have the blindfold. This could be you denying the problem that exists. And other people are seeing it. Other people that care about you might be bringing this to your attention. And... You know, there is this separation and loss here that is being experienced. And it, I just feel like that you're denying your own doubts and fears. And perhaps you're just becoming aware of all the gaslighting that's been occurring. You didn't want to believe it before. And a lot of times, you know, just letting things slide and letting things go just makes it easier because then we don't have to deal with the narcissistic anger of that person. Now, let's see what you can do to bring about some kind of resolution. And we start with the Four of Cups. Okay, first of all, you need to acknowledge that you are dissatisfied about something. You are dissatisfied with the situation you are in. Next, we have the Ten of Cups. You want bliss, and look at the bliss falls under the sun. You want to bring the light into your space. And we have this good housekeeping spell and this refreshing tea. This will help to bring that energy into your body. And then you can bring it into your world. Then we have justice in the world. Wow. Okay, now 
It could be that this person keeps threatening to leave you and it plays on your fear of insecurity. Um, perhaps you do rely on them for your security in the world um, and they keep threatening you with that. And here you're going to get some justice. There's going to be balance in the world. So something is coming that's going to help you realign with your balance. And look, we have the Ace of Wands. This is a new beginning, a fresh start. And with the Ace of Wands, this is creative energy. This could be you getting creative with your space, clearing out the space, and maybe inviting your friends to help um, reveal the truth. I almost want to say like an intervention for some of you, but for others, I feel that just pursuing your own creativity is going to be very healing for you. And you're going to find strength in that by following your bliss. You're dissatisfied with this situation. You want to escape from it. You want to leave it. Here with the Ten of Cups, you do have those that do love and care about you. The Ten of Cups is um, about following your bliss. And that's going to bring some balance to your world. And working creati with creativity through your doubts and fears can also help bring about revelations and spiritual epiphanies for yourself. Now, let's look at what shadow healing is going to occur here. Okay, and here's your artwork. And it says, Dazed. Enough time has been spent wandering around in a listless days. Even if you're unsure of the direction you're heading, just start by doing something. Okay, this sounds like somebody who has been um, going through some narcissistic abuse. You're just dazed. You don't know what's real. This can also be a lot of gaslighting because gaslighting is meant to confuse you and leave you in a daze questioning your own reality and you're feeling this dissatisfaction because you are dazed and it leaves you not knowing what to do and here with this eight of swords here you're paralyzed in your own doubts and fears now let's look at the moon magic as i am doing this during the dark moon new moon transition in cancer and that new moon in cancer occurs on tuesday june 28th at 10 52 p.m eastern standard time so please adjust to your time zone okay here we have the moon goddess dionysius okay so i explore my wildness and dance in pleasure and that goes so wonderful with this day's even if you're just unsure of the direction you're heading, just start by doing something. So dance, bring pleasure, play music, let it move your body, and maybe it'll help motivate you to do this good housekeeping spell, just clearing out a sacred space for you to meditate, for you to be creative. Clear off the drawing table. Okay, let's see what kind of magic. Okay, this card literally just jumped out and I feel that it's appropriate. So, time to shine. 
this creates the energetic resonance for golden opportunities because we have this sun and world. The sun illuminates the world and time to shine, time to bring out your creativity and let that creativity help bring balance into your life and you can start by following your bliss. So I'm gonna end your reading here. I apologize for the low flying airplane. So until next time, take care. Hello, Pile 2. If you chose the Rhodonite Sphere with the Love Spell cards, welcome to your reading. So we're looking at what the underlying source of a problem is and what you can do to bring about some kind of resolution. And hopefully this reading will help you to consider other solutions that you otherwise may not have considered. Okay, and we have the Sylvan spell. Okay, this is a lovely spell if you are given a small tree as a gift. To wish for strength and good health for you and your love, before you plant the sapling, tie a bow in some colored ribbon and plant the bow with a small heart symbol in the soil under the roots of the tree. After you have planted the tree, water it well, make a wish that both you and your love will grow strong and enduring as the tree takes root and begins to flourish. When the tree bears its first leaf, press it in the book associated with the one you love. As long as you tend your tree with love, you will both enjoy blooming health and vitality. What a lovely spell. A lovely love spell to help your love to grow and endure. Okay, now let's take a look at your divine tea. You might need something to drink and sip on while you are planting your tree. Okay, this one flipped up and it is... Number 23 with lemon, lime, mint, and cucumber tea, and it's refreshing. So pour boiling water over a bunch of mint in a jug and cool slightly. Grate lemon rind and squeeze it with two limes. Stir through the mint tea, add some cucumber slices and honey to taste. Stir and cool in refrigerator. Fill glasses with ice and pour tea over. Oh, that does sound very refreshing. Okay, let's look at the Dark Goddess Oracle to give us a clue as to what the possible underlying source of this problem might be. And this could be a truth that's hiding in the shadows or even in plain sight and we just choose not to see it. Okay, we have Uzumi with Persuasion. And forgive me if I mispronounce that goddess's name. I am going to read from the book, Kermini. Okay. Coax, encourage, urge, persuade. Inducement plays in this charade. Heed opinions, adhere to views. Free will conquers, let folks choose. By the power of the dark goddess in me, protection in place, blessed be. So this dark goddess's foresight is 
to hold your tongue a little longer. Listen to the needs of others. Consider local governance or an organization that you want to support, something that will help other people. So help a friend who's struggling to be heard. In other words, listen to that friend. Okay, get more information before you try and change a loved one's mind. Be open to a different point of view. Okay, this is the hidden problem, is someone in this relationship is trying to push a certain point of view and not allowing the other to have their own point of view or their say. So this card is asking you to let someone have their say, or it's the other way around where somebody's not listening to what you have to say. This is a general reading, so please go with the messages that resonate with you. Okay, let's go a little bit deeper into this underlying problem with the tarot. And we start with the Ace of Cups. Okay, this could be a new relationship. And one person is trying to take charge of this relationship. Next, we have the King of Swords. This could be with a Libra type person. But Libras tend to like relationships to be balanced. So there might be a little bit of emotional struggle with the balancing. Next we have the Nine of Cups. Okay, this is usually a card of contentment. This could be that you might just be letting the person, you know, just do whatever they want to do, whether you agree with it or not, in allowing them to be who they are. But by you not by you just going along with it even if you don't feel right about it uh it's still this form of persuasion and perhaps you want to say something but you're afraid that you might upset the other person and because this is a new relationship with this ace of cups it could be that you're not quite at that point to where you can start revealing um, more of who you are. Okay, then we have the sun. And this is, it's important, you need to shine. And it's also important for this to go both ways, to be balanced, so that there's a comfortableness between the two of you. And you should be able to be comfortable in sharing that. So I feel that this is more of an internal insecurity that you might be feeling where, oh, I don't want to say that. I don't want to rock the boat. Um, but you necessarily might not be doing that. Just because you disagree with someone doesn't mean that it's going to turn into an argument. It could become more of a compromise, something more balanced. So, you know, make some lemon, lime, mint, and cucumber tea and share this with your loved one and talk about what's on your heart. You know, what's, what's going on in your heart because that way there your contentment can grow with each other you'll feel so much more comfortable with each other and it'll actually help your love grow like the tree in the sylvan song or the sylvan spell okay now let's look at what you can do to bring about some kind of resolution for this And I feel like it's more of just having the courage to speak your heart, to get it off your chest. And we 
always start with the Wheel of Fortune. Yes, a shift. This way, by communicating with each other, because we do have this King of Swords, the swords are about communication and action. By shifting the conversation, it's going to bring about a change, a shift, a deepening in your relationship. Look, the star. It's going to be even more of what you wish and hope for in a relationship. Um, the star is, um, I feel like, because the star represents astrology as well, I feel like that your astrological charts are extremely compatible. And that's why you're so comfortable with each other. And neither of you should feel uncomfortable about sharing what you're feeling. And here we have the death card. This is going to change everything. It's going to end those doubts and fears. It's going to bring about this contentment that you want to feel in a relationship that's based in love and respect. And here we have the hanged one, which is there is a suspension here, but also with the hanged man, think of the butterfly. It's a caterpillar before that. And in between, it's this hanging pupa this cocoon that's hanging there. So this is the hangman. It is the caterpillar dreaming of becoming the butterfly. And so this is really beautiful. And so as your love grows with this tree, it's going to deepen because we also, with the hangman, he, his mind is going into the deep subconscious. <clears throat> So this is going to be a very deep feeling sense of love with your partner that's going to endure. Okay, now let's check out the shadow healing. Here is your artwork and it says be mused it's one of those I can't believe that just happened moments find the fun and stop shaking your head no harm was intended okay so this might be somebody might have been joking around with you and you may have taken it the wrong way <clears throat> But no harm was intended here. So just embrace the fun, laugh at the moment. But tell that to your partner. Just say, did you mean this? Did you mean that? So try not to be offended, but rather be amused. Like, what just happened? I can't believe that happened. It could also be one of those times where... You say the same thing at the same time, or you finish each other's sentences, and you just, you just are that um, in tune with each other. Okay, let's look at the moon magic. I am doing this reading during the dark moon, new moon phases of the Cancer New Moon, which will occur on Tuesday, June 28th at 10 52 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please adjust to your time zone on the planet, although this is still a timeless reading. Okay, here is your artwork, and we have the waxing gibbous moon, which is just before the full moon. I am courageous and powerful. Yeah, have the courage to laugh at yourself and laugh at silly misunderstandings where no harm was intended. 
Okay, let's see what kind of magic is going to come about here. Okay, we have perseverance, the motivation to keep going despite the odds. Okay, yeah, even though there was a little misunderstanding perhaps, or you just mistook somebody's joke and it kind of hurt your feelings, you know, be courageous. That's your power. And that's going to bring about this change, this shift where you're able to be comfortable enough to speak up where you otherwise didn't feel like you could in other situations. So persevere. This person that you're with, this is a positive relationship that is going to grow and endure. And um, I'm going to end this reading here. And I hope that you really enjoyed this reading. And thank you for liking and subscribing to my channel, as that does help make it grow. And until next time, take care. Hello, Pile 3. If you chose the green Ulexolite or TV stone with the money spell cards, welcome to your reading. So we're looking at what the underlying source of a problem is and what you can do to bring about some kind of resolution. So this reading is also meant to help you to consider other solutions that you otherwise may not have considered. And we have the Cauldron Money Magic. Okay, to attract more money into your life, fill a pot partially with fresh water and place it on your altar during the new or waxing moon phase. Light a green candle and pour an offering of chamomile and mint tea into the pot. Pray aloud. I call upon you, gods and goddesses of old. Please come and fill my pot with gold, with harm to none and blessings to thee. I honor you for bringing me health and prosperity. Afterward, pour the water into your garden and imbue your home with the cauldron money magic. Okay, that sounds like a fun little money spell to do. Let's check out your divine tea. Here is your artwork, and we have number three with lavender and mint tea. Place a large handful of lavender and a bunch of mint in a pot and one liter or quart of water and simmer for 20 minutes. Strain and serve in a hot pot or cool and pour over ice for a refreshing blast. That sounds like some delicious tea. And it goes so well with your cauldron money magic spell. Now let's look at the Dark Goddess Oracle to see what could be the underlying source of the problem here. Sometimes it hides in the shadows. Sometimes it's just right in front of us. Okay, and we have in Ghana, health. And it also mentions health here. Keep in mind, health is wealth. So take good care of your health. I am going to read from the Dark Goddess booklet. 
So deep down, the body always knows. Ignore to welcome in more woes. Seek a cure, advice in trust. Don't be proud, good health's a must. By the power of the dark goddess in me, protection in place, blessed be. So this card is asking you to get yourself checked out and speak about what ails you. For help is at hand from an unexpected source. You are not alone in your troubles and others can offer great guidance. Exercise more, eat well, drink plenty of water, breathe, walk in nature, through the woods, by the sea, or around a lake or a reservoir. So if your body has been flashing signs at you, like sore joints or cramps, back aches or itchy skin, then you really do need to start paying attention to your body. So make sure that you stay on top of your health needs, your health care needs. Let's go deeper into this with the tarot. Because let's face it, being sick is expensive. Staying healthy can be expensive too, but it's far more expensive if you are really sick. Okay, we have the Three of Wands. Perhaps you are waiting for results to come in. This is also a card of taking a risk. So are you taking a risk with your health by waiting and not getting checked out? Here we have the Seven of Pentacles. Again, waiting waiting for the right moment, waiting to have the time. The time is never right to go see the doctor. Queen of Cups, it's time to make the time. You know there is something within you that is getting your attention, telling you that you need to do something. And then we have the Ace of Swords and that means to begin now. You need to take action. No more waiting, because the swords are all about action and what we think. Also, gathering more information here. Um, so that's going to be very important. Perhaps you need to gather more information on how to take better care of your health. Perhaps your bad health has been costing you some money. This is a general reading, so please only go with the messages that resonate with you. Okay, we start with the Two of Wands. Just below the Three of Wands. The Two of Wands is thinking about something. What changes do you need to make for your to improve your health? Okay, the Wheel of Fortune. Some, something's got to change. You need to change the way that you take care of yourself. Perhaps you need to make time to make the appointments you need to make. Perhaps you need to take the time, make the time to eat better, to exercise, to take better care of yourself. Then we have the Three of Wands. Um, this is taking a chance. Perhaps you have to um, ask for assistance. Uh, perhaps you might need a workout buddy, an accountability buddy, you know, when it comes to eating right. Then we have the five of coins. 
Okay, perhaps you've been feeling a loss of finances. Uh, perhaps some of you are feeling abandoned. You want to give up. Don't give up. There's always room for improvement. Progress is but one step at a time. And this is asking, you know, that first shift starts within your mind. But you have to act now. And then we have justice. So, yeah, it's going to be important that you balance out your health needs with and make some life changes to improve your health bottom of the deck we have the three of swords okay this could have something to do with your heart health so make sure that you're taking good care of your heart okay let's look at the shadow healing and go a little bit deeper here. What needs to be healed? Okay, here is your artwork. And it says, stunned. That moment when time stands still as you try to make sense of what has occurred. This is the golden moment to plan your next move rather than react to the situation. Okay, perhaps some of you in my pile threes have received some news regarding your health and it's taken you aback. It kind of shocked you. But you're going to do what is needed to do to improve your health and again keep in mind health is wealth now let's look at your moon card as i am doing this reading during the dark moon new moon of cancer which occurs on tuesday june 28th at 10 52 p.m Eastern Standard Time, so please adjust to your time zone in on the planet. This is still a timeless tarot reading, though. Okay, here's your artwork, and it is the moon god Dionysius. I explore my wildness and dance in pleasure. Okay. Dance is a great way to exercise and, and make your heart strong. Get some cardio going. And you go with your own rhythm. Explore that wildness. Okay, let's look at your magic. And we have the Mystic Star, Harmony in the Home, and Great Friendships. Okay, so maybe some of you have been really stressed out, and that's what's affecting your heart health. It, you know, because stress, and it can also stress your kidneys too, because when you're stressed, your adrenal glands keep dumping the adrenaline and you know and then there's cortisol in your blood system that can help you know add to the weight gain not to mention you're in a constant state of stress so that's going to stress your organs especially your heart and your kidneys so pay attention to what your body is trying to tell you and you know, bring some harmony into your home and build positive relationships, which you might need an accountability buddy uh, so that you can keep each other on track of staying healthy. And again, 
health is well. So I'm going to end your reading here. I hope that you enjoyed it. And thank you for liking and subscribing to my channel. It does help make it grow. And until next time, take care. Hello, Pile 4. If you chose the Opalate Sphere with the Moon Spell cards, welcome to your reading. Now, I am doing this reading just before the Dark Moon new moon in cancer and that new moon will occur on tuesday june 28th at 10 52 p.m eastern standard time so please adjust to your time zone on the planet okay we're looking at what is the possible underlying source of a problem and what you can do to bring about some kind of resolution and hopefully this reading will help you to consider other solutions that you otherwise may not have considered. Okay, and look at this new moon candle consecration. If you are looking for love, perform this right and you will soon find a lover to satisfy your needs. On the night of the next new moon, take two pieces of rose quartz and place them on the floor in the center of your bedroom. Light two red candles and use this affirming chant. Beautiful crystal I hold this night, flame with love for my delight. Goddess of love, I ask of you, guide me in the path that is true. Harm to none as love comes to me. This I ask, and so it shall be. Okay, and that's beautiful because the Cancer New Moon, new moons are great for setting new intentions. And the Cancer New Moon is really good for anything having to do with the home and family. So what better way to consecrate the new moon candle with this lovely spell to bring a positive love into your life for life okay let's look at your divine tea Here is your artwork, and we have number 37 with rhubarb spiced tea. So I'll let you pause the video to read the instructions on how to make the tea, but this is for a relaxing tea. So you want to have this tea while you're doing this new moon candle consecration and um, so that you can find a love that makes you feel relaxed because love should just flow with ease into your life. Now let's look at the Dark Goddess Oracle to see what could be part of the underlying source of this problem. Sometimes the truth can be hiding in our shadow or it's something that we just try not to see. We overlook it even though it's right in front of us. And we have Sedna with abandonment. Okay. I get the feeling that my pile fours have been experiencing some abandonment issues, which has led to some relationship issues. And, you know, that's normal. You know, when you have had uh, abandonment issues from childhood, 
they kind of bleed over into our relationships, even with our friends. So here, with, I'm going to read from the book, Frozen, Plunged into Despair, Abandoned, Left Without a Care. Release yourself from holding tight. Dive deep within, rescues in sight. By the power of the dark goddess in me, protection in place, blessed be. Now, Sedna is of the Inuit origin, and she was a beautiful maiden who was ostracized when it was believed that she had been impregnated by a wild animal. So her father took her out on the water to throw her overboard, but she clung to the side of the kayak so tightly that he cut off her fingers. They became sea creatures, and she was immortalized as the goddess of the sea. Okay, so this goddess's foresight is you're holding on way too tight. Let go of those who hurt you. Time to build trust in yourself and others. The love you seek starts from within. It's time to become thick-skinned. Your fears are rooted in the past. A new spiritual family awaits. So with this abandonment card here, you know, you're trying to build trust with yourself. You have to build trust with yourself first. So the first thing that you need to do is not to abandon yourself. Listen to yourself. You know, journaling is a great way to work through those thoughts that keep us in those mind loops and keep us stuck in the past. And we keep re-experiencing those traumas. And again, they bleed over into our present day relationships. So let's go a little bit deeper into this with the tarot to see what the underlying source of this abandonment problem is. Which seems to be blocking you from the love that, that you're looking for. And you can certainly do this new moon candle consecration for the love you know, the love that you bring yourself is also included in that spell. If you feel that you're not ready for someone else, because again, you have to build the trust with yourself first. Okay, so we start with, look at that, the moon card with the moon spells. Okay, there are things that are in your subconscious. That's what the moon represents. It's your emotional subconscious. It's feminine. It goes so beautiful with this uh, Sedna abandonment card. Then we have the Four of Pentacles. This is you holding on too tightly. You know, this is your fears. You know, you're tense from your fears of loss of being abandoned. Uh, you, abandonment is a lack of trust. So learn to trust yourself. Hold on to yourself. And also keep a dream journal. Some of you might be receiving messages in your dreams. Then we have temperance. This is nice. This is you changing. You are becoming aware of this cycle that you've been caught up in. You're working on not abandoning yourself. You're building trust with yourself, thus making your intuition stronger. And this temperance card is a form of initiation because you are balancing, for example, I'm going to bring this card closer. There's one foot on the land of logic and reason and one foot in the emotional waters. And this is the water of initiation, the cleansing bath in which you prepare yourself before you get up on this 
new path, which leads you to the crown of your desires. But you have to change something within yourself. You trust the flow of your being, of your energy. And I really think that this new moon candle consecration can be very helpful for you. Rose quartz is a beautiful crystal for healing. It, um, it's great for the inner child and it really helps to heal that inner child. And it's great for self-love so that by loving yourself and trusting yourself to be there for you, you're not abandoning yourself. And then we have the Four of Wands. Now this is the Happy Harvest Home, but this is, we're looking at the underlying problem here. So I'm going to say that the underlying problem is within the home. Now this could be your childhood home. This could be the home that you're in now because again, quite often we repeat those patterns until we adjust and make changes. You can't expect different results without first changing and change begins with yourself. And here also with this, you are your home. Don't abandon yourself. You can trust yourself. Okay, now let us look at what you can do to bring about some kind of resolution here. have death. Transformation is going to be needed here. Think of the moon going through the cycles. In a way, it goes through a death when it's at the dark moon or crone phase. It's dark. Death is dark. It's sleep. And here you dream, just as with the moon, you dream. So there's a transformation. There's this letting go. Don't hold so tightly because you're afraid. Here's the three of cups. You will be celebrated. Just by making that change, it's going to make a world of difference. It's going to bring about the emergence of a new you and it's going to be celebrated. Your love is going to start coming to you in the forms of friends. Remember, your spiritual family awaits you. Five of Wands. Okay, this is some of that verbal hauntings. The Five of Wands are disagreements, arguments, um, but not always. Sometimes they can be challenging questions, questioning your doubts and fears to help you to understand them better. So I'm getting more of the feeling, because it's under the temperance card here, that this is more of an eternal, internal conversation that you're having, uh, echoes of the past. You're clearing out the echoes of the past you're letting that go. Um, and then we have the Ace of Coins. Okay, the Ace of Coins is this material new beginning, something tangible. I feel that you're not going to be so fearful of your material resources. And you're going to become more like this four of wands where you welcome everyone and they come bearing gifts. It's celebration. To me, I see this 
the beginning of new celebration. And this is very well for all your hard work that you're doing with your shadow self, clearing out the old memories that have kept you in those mind loops of, of feeling scarcity, of feeling like I just, I'm living from paycheck to paycheck. I'm, I'm comfortable, but I'm not growing. And here you're making a shift to where now you're more free, you're welcoming, and you're not feeling abandoned because now it's going to show up in your world. The coins is about material. It, it can certainly mean material wealth. It could also mean a new job. So you're elevating because, you know, when we are in the financial realm that we feel more comfortable in, where we feel like we can open up and share with others, it changes our perspective. But this is asking you to celebrate. You know, here, the change that you're making is you're going to celebrate each day despite the mind loops that are going on within you. You can transform that perhaps into writing, again, the dream journaling, but it could also be a journey journal as well in which you might turn into a book from the lessons that you learn and others could learn from those lessons as well. If not, just giving them encouragement to get through those tough times. Now, let's look at the shadow healing here. Because it certainly feels like and looks like you are doing some intense shadow work here. We have the moon with the death card. You're going deep into the subconscious mind um, and almost bringing back to life something that feels like that died. And it could be your sense of life, celebration, enjoyment of your friends. Okay, here is your artwork. And it is anguish. Simply knowing there is an end to this Feeling of sorrow is the very beginning of your healing process. And quite often, when we feel abandoned, we feel betrayed, and it's normal to feel angry. And it's okay that when you acknowledge that. And with anger, anger surrounds a sorrow. Sorrow is in the center of all anger. Now let's look at your moon magic card. And because this is a general tarot reading, that sorrow and anguish is going to be different and yet similar for all of you. And here is your artwork. And we have the moon goddess Artemis. I am connected to the earth and all life around me. And here we have the three of cups, the celebration of life, the celebration of being connected to the earth. And with the five of wands here, becoming more grounded, <clears throat> excuse me, becoming more grounded in what you think and say to others. And most importantly, what you don't say to others. But with the earth and all of nature around you, 
that is a great place to begin healing connecting with nature because nature will not abandon you just as the freezing cold ocean embraced and took uh, Sedna to the depths and she and made her a sea goddess Then we have, look at this water. <laughs> okay, work with the element of water for healing, purification, and refinement. And here with your new moon candle consecration, you can most certainly incorporate this with a ritual bath, working with water. And with the Cancer New Moon, the water sign, ruler of the moon, um, and the emotion. Allow yourself to cry. Embrace your sorrow. You know, that is emotion that is beyond words. And celebrate your process of going through this. Okay, I'm going to end your reading here. It was very intense and profound. I hope that you enjoyed it. And thank you so much for liking and subscribing to my channel as it is helping it to grow. And until next time, take care.